What is good? We're back. We got a little bipod action. We got our, our guy Austin. How you doing, man? Good to see you again. What's up, man? How you doing? Good, good. Getting becoming a, a regular fixture around here. You can find him on the Twitters at at Austin Abbott FF. Yeah, man, I love it. I love talking ball with you guys. I'm excited, man. This is gonna be a fun one today. Yeah, the the, the comment section is is uh singing your praises so let's let's keep it rolling today uh we are gonna hit up some uh mustaches uh i almost i almost shaved just a mustache in here but my wife my wife shot it down uh so uh mustache players we'll, we'll do this throughout the the off season here um and and wanted to get our first kind of iteration of this in these, these guys aren't going to be the sexiest names but they're going to be guys who could you go into the offseason with at the bottom of your bench that could improve in value some veterans some rookies some super cheap guys some guys you saying no way i don't like them hit us in the comment section below with guys that that, that you're thinking about stashing or questions about guys that you may or may not stash uh but be sure to like subscribe comment below all that jazz um greatly helps the uh the channel out and helps the boys out and uh, so we can keep doing this thing so austin who is uh one of your um 2024 mustache players jesus man we're already in 2024 it's crazy isn't it flying by all right first player that i want to talk about today i'm not going to tell you guys his name just yet i kind of want to just run with it i want to give you some information see if you can figure it out while i'm going through it see if i can sell you on him because i didn't really care for this player a whole lot but once i dug into him i uh i kind of sold my soul kenny pickett i kind of got (laughs) no no dude never (laughs) absolutely not (laughs) Maybe with Matt Canada gone, but uh, all right, hear me out. So right now on Dynasty, shout out Fantasy Pros, we have the uh, Dynasty wide receiver 87. Just to tell you what we're working with, right? You can probably go buy this player for a fourth round pick. A third would definitely get it done. This is a deep, deep dart throw. A player that in the grand scheme of things, like he probably won't hit. I recognize that. He probably won't be super valuable. Hear me out. Full transparency, I don't have any shares, but I probably should because I'm going to talk myself into this guy. We're talking about a rookie wide receiver that's in the NFC. Every team usually has a tall guy, right? Every team Mm -hmm. usually has a fast guy, right? This receiver happens to be both. He's 6'5". He's 205 pounds, according to Sleeper. Uh, Ran a 4.47 40 time at the Combine. A 27% target share in college. Listen to his last two seasons in college. His production was just absurd. 71 receptions, 1,293 yards, 15 touchdowns. And then his senior season, 81 catches, 1,096 yards, 11 touchdowns. But wait, it gets better. He's played 84 and 74% of the snaps in his last two games. So he's clearly becoming a much larger factor in this offense. His team's fourth in pass attempts, high volume, right? You'd love to see that. We love that. 11th in passing yards, 8th in the red zone. Okay, so they're clearly scoring and very efficient. You love to see it. The top three receivers in front of him, all out this upcoming week. This is a rookie NFC wide receiver. Shout out Wake Forest, six-round pick, 24 Mm. years old. His name is A.T. Perry. Nice. I was going to throw – I was going to go Wicks uh, Mm. from from Virginia, but I don't think he was that fast. I don't don't know what his – and then I was like, well, maybe it's Mingo, but he, then he said they were scoring a lot or something or along those lines or moving the ball nope. a lot. And that's not happening. Uh, so, so A.T. Uh, Perry, I like it. So hear me out, dude. Chris Olave, right? He's going to be the one. Like, no question. Chris sure. Olave is a stud, top 10 dynasty wide receiver. Easy. Love love Chris Olave. Rashid Shahid, who's a nice little player. Uh, who knows what his future holds, realistically? He's going to be out this upcoming week. He's going to be sidelined. So is Olave, I believe, because he was in concussion protocol, had a nasty hit. And Michael Thomas is on a one-year deal, and he's currently on IR. I believe he will be back later this season from what I've read, according to Dennis Allen. But uh, with that being said, man, those are the top three options at wide receiver, I I would argue, for the uh, New Orleans Saints. And uh, I believe they're all going to be out this upcoming week. So this is someone like if you wanted to go put an offer in tonight, man, or – you know, prior to Sunday, it makes sense. It's logical. Yeah. And, you know, I, I like that even more because somebody I could throw on this list who, who, you know, Shahid, like you mentioned, was somebody that you could throw on this list. He's had some splash and some good plays. Mm-hmm. I don't know that he's quite what you're looking for in this in this kind of discussion here, but I would certainly throw Shahid in there if, if 
you know, you can get him for cheap. I've, I've liked what you've seen. There, there's some really good uh, advanced numbers on, on some of the stuff he's done this year, just hasn't gotten the ball. Um, but he's in a contract year as well. So that, you know, even more love for, for A.T. Perry there. So a little two for one uh, uh, stash potential there. But I like the I like the idea with A.T. Perry there. There's there's a real chance that A.T. Perry could be the Saints wide receiver too moving forward, right? It's not even necessarily a hot take. Like when you just look at the roster, when you look at contracts, when you look at the situation, yeah, right? I don't think it's, their salary it's cap really situation just... is awesome either. <laughs> but I'm not sure. It could be, could be this year that they get out of hell. I don't know. The Saints will never be out of cap hell, dude. They're uh, they're they're eternally stuck. But yeah. um, who do you got, man? I want to hear. I want to hear who's on your list. Um, I'll start with uh, with a veteran, and you know, I don't. I, and FFPC, I just you know, I'll be scooping him up. I've scooped him up in a couple spots where I have some IR spots and some bench spots available, and you know, maybe I'm not making the playoffs here, which I like to do in FFPC. Um, just throw some guys on the bottom of the bench and he, he maybe he'll he'll get replaced by somebody else before the end of the year but darnell mooney for me who's been a you know a, pot, a favorite of this podcast for a long time i think he's like the uh i don't know if you've ever seen happy gilmore uh but there's mm-hmm. you know when he takes his his mom to the <laughs> retirement home and this lady's like mister mister yeah. get me yeah, yeah. out of here Mooney's just just biding his time trying to get the ff out of uh out of chicago um and you know maybe it'll never happen. He's a little older. I'm sure, I'm sure people don't love it, but you know, there was a time where he had 140 targets, 81 receptions over a thousand yards, four touchdowns. That was back in 21. Um, yes, he's going to be a little bit older, um, but I think he can go somewhere and, you know, on a proper offense that throws the ball down the field and, and, you know, operates like a, like an actual NFL offense. I think he can be a nice two in an offense. Like, you know, like we've seen him in the past, he can stretch the field, he can be electric for you. He can do a lot of different things. He's put up some numbers before. Nobody cares about Mooney anymore, and those are the kind of guys I'll just throw on the bottom of my bench for free, get as a kicker in a trade. Like I said, FFPC, he's he's out there. You can pick him up for a dollar. You have to pick up guys for a dollar. You can't pick up guys for free in FFPC, in case you're wondering. But if, if you could, I would pick him up for free. Mooney would be the kind of veteran guy that I'm looking for. Has performed in the league before can be explosive you know i'm not going to come in here and say that he's necessarily going to win you the league but on as a depth piece to help you get by on week to week and have some some potential hey i might be wanting to start this guy as a wide receiver three if if he did go somewhere that was wide receiver needy and needed another explosive guy to pair up with you know a bona fide one um i think that would be uh you know very very strong for mooney's value moving forward so Darnell Mooney would be my first uh, mustache. And like I said, we're going to do this multiple times as we dive deeper into contracts and free agency and all that stuff. We'll, we'll, we'll do this a couple more times. So Mooney is my, is my first, first one who uh, you got any rookies on this list? Cause I, you know, sometimes that's a, that's an easy spot to go. Yeah, man. I'd like to add one thing to Darnell Mooney just before we move on. And then I'll talk about a rookie. Um, he is just 26 years old. It does feel like he's older than that. And he's got the same exact measurables as uh, Jordan Addison, but they're both 5'11", 173 pounds on the dot, I believe. Yeah. And he was the wide receiver 23 back in 2021, like you mentioned. I just want to throw this out there just, just for the hell of it. He finished with more fantasy points than T. Higgins back in 2021. Mm. So, like, I, like, it's crazy. It means nothing like moving forward. But, like, you know, we've we've seen that upside from him. And, and you're 100% right, man. Darnell Mooney wants to get the FF out of Chicago. <laughs> yeah. I don't play. I don't blame him. Right. And he's in a um, contract year is what kind of what that meant if you weren't catching catching the drift yeah. there. So um, he's, he's ready to he's ready to get out. I cannot see him bringing back Mooney by any stretch of the imagination, no, nor I don't think Fields is coming back either. Yeah, I'm I'm with you, man. Uh, as far as rookies go, another another player that I want to talk about today, the tight end 17 currently on Fantasy Pros, according to their Dynasty rankings, Michael Mayer. He is one of Ooh. my favorite tight ends in all of Dynasty. I think he's I one can. of the best by lows, 6'5", 265. Size measurables, never an issue, right? Nobody ever had a problem. We, we love the size out of Michael Mayer, 35th overall pick. Just to give you an idea, like he was practically a first-round pick to give you an idea of how early he went. Michael Mayer got drafted earlier than Jonathan Taylor, Brees Hall, Javante Williams, Debo Samuel, right? Obviously different draft classes. I'm mm-hmm. just referring to the, the draft capital that this kid got. My point being, the Raiders spent, you know, the serious draft cap on him. They love him, right? It's It's... 
you know, it's blatant. And Darren Waller, obviously, he's been out of town for some time now. This is his clear replacement. You know, he's on a cheap contract, locked in for four years minimum. The Raiders are telling us it's evident that they like Michael Mayer. The kid's 22 years old. His player comp, Zach Ertz, right? Like, as far as size goes. Mm -hmm. Uh, Zach Ertz went on to have a pretty damn good career. He's still playing some decent ball. You know, he's he's had five seasons as a top six tight end, just to show you how how solid of a uh, career Zach Ertz has had. But Michael Mayer's finished as a top nine tight end twice in the past seven games, right? So it doesn't seem like he's gotten a whole lot of buzz, but he's actually had some productive games for what it's worth. And here's what matters most to me. Uh, I think this is very important. It's him actually being on the field. He has seven straight games as a rookie of 70% or more snap percentage, right? That's important. And six of the six of those seven most recent games he's been on the field for 80 percent or or more right so he's really not taking a whole lot of breathers and he's also been hyper efficient man he's 10th in target separation that's very impressive for a rookie mm-hmm. he, he's ninth in yards per target and he's sixth in yards per reception again super efficient man and here's my hot take for the night here's my hot take this is this is how high I am on Michael Mayer. I believe Mayer will be a top seven dynasty tight end in the near future. You know, can quote me on it, clip it. I'm all in, dude. I love Michael Mayer. He was a prospect that I was infatuated with coming out of Notre Dame. I'm buying all the shares. I'm holding. I'm stashing. That's what we're talking about today. Is stashes. Go oh, yeah. get Mike. Go get Michael Mayer, man. He's a good player. He's gonna get better. Yeah, a little a little mustache. Um, yeah, I like it. I like. I, I was a big, big Michael Mayer guy as well. The the next guy on on my list, I'm gonna go uh, Puka Nakua. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, I'm just I'm just kidding around, but um, I just I've just seen that. a lot of uh, dynasty chatter lately because because Puka's had you know a couple down games here, and they're like, oh well, see, flash in the pan, you know, just a. Uh, just uh you know i i knew it you know his, his rankings way down and yada 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 and it's like he was a fifth round pick and i just i just it's just it's weird to me you know i know you're a draft capital guy um uh, but like well i feel like you kind of have this backwards when somebody comes out and performs like that and looks like they do on the field like we should be praising him for being a fifth round draft pick instead of holding it against him um mm-hmm. i just you know I, it's not i don't think he's done plenty like nobody's coming in and replacing puka nakua at this point they're not going to be like ah oh, we need to draft another guy and just throw him to the side like i just it just doesn't make any sense puka nakua is going to be just fine uh, obviously i'm kidding around i just seen a lot of twitter chatter over the last couple of days is is puka nakua still this wide receiver puka nakua is still that wide receiver like you know if he had the draft capital people would st- be he'd be the rookie number one uh you know from from the season that he did but since he was drafted in the fifth it's just like that shouldn't matter anymore he came out he performed it should just be like hey the nfl got this wrong as hell um and you know is matthew stafford just everyone's he's retiring everybody knows that he's it's like is he i don't know like i'd I'd say cooper cups retiring before matthew stafford i think they owe him like 60 million over the next two years i don't care who you are that's a lot of money um, and I'll, I think, I don't think the Rams are terribly far off from being a good team. So that'll keep you around a little longer. So anyway, uh, just kind of making a little joke there. I, I'll go tight end as well. I'll go, uh, Donald Parham here. Uh, Ooh, okay. Been, okay. Uh, I wasn't expecting to hear Donald Parham today on the pod. Been a favorite of mine for a while. Got injured at the end of last season. Um, stashed on a lot of teams for me and not, you know, deeper teams, obviously and on shallower teams, you probably couldn't hang on to them, but you know, Everett's contract is up. Uh, coming into this year or coming out of this year uh, we don't know who the coach is going to be in there will it will will Kellen Moore just maybe take over as head coach or will he stay on as OC I don't know uh, but Parham's looked okay without without Everett he's a big strong fast uh, player and you know I think they don't really have another tight end on the on the roster outside of Stone Smart which again I you know I pick up both of them, put them on the bottom of the bench and see what happens coming into next season. Parham has the the size speed kind of measurable stuff. He's a ginormous man who runs really fast um, and has kind of been figuring out the NFL. I believe he was in the XFL for a little while um, and we've seen flashes of Parham being really good. Um, So if maybe they move forward of saying, hey, we're going to keep the tight end position cheap and Stone Smart was a, a quarterback who's, you know, transitioning, I believe, into a into a tight end and has has had some run. Uh, for the Chargers, but you know that that's a really good quarterback uh, that that I want P 
pieces tied to, maybe Parham can get in there and 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 make a splash. Uh, he's super free, super cheap. Nobody cares about him. Throw him on the bottom of a bench and go into 2024 and see what the Chargers do in the draft. You know, we thought we all thought maybe Kincaid was going to go there or Mayer was going to go there, and none of them went there. So maybe they're okay with just riding with Parham for another year or drafting a fifth round tight end or something. Um, worth a swing in my book. I like again, like the physical stature, like the measurables, and like what I've seen on the field uh sans everett uh this season so uh donald parham stuck with the tight end theme there uh hell yeah hell yeah dude i like that uh i like that he's paired with justin herbert and it's cool that he's the same exact height as me at six foot eight right love to see <laughs> that that's cool man uh that's a fun little dart there 26 years old we're gonna move on we're gonna talk about another young wide receiver someone else that you should stash he's currently the wide receiver 46 on fantasy pros dynasty rankings I can't quit him. I don't know if you quit him. I'll never quit him. We're talking about Traylon Burks, okay? Mm. So before you guys turn off the pod, like, just hear me out, man. <laughs> uh, go buy Traylon Burks. He's he is dirt cheap, right? Like, ask yourself this: Has Traylon Burks ever been cheaper? I don't. I don't think he has, right? At this point, people are either giving up, fed up, or you're delusional, like myself, right? You're one of the three. And yeah. I just think that he could easily be bought for a second in 2024. No question. And that's probably too steep, right? Like you could probably, I think there's a world that exists where you can get Traylon Burks cheaper than that. Um, maybe you want to trade a veteran wide receiver. If maybe somehow you could pair thirds, I'm hypothetically speaking, you know, just see what your league is like. Just throw out some offers. Here we go. This is what I want to say about Traylon Burks. First thing I want to say, man, like it's hilarious that people are pr- just – declaring him dead they're saying that his career is already over fellas he is 23 years old right he is six foot two 225 pounds size was never the issue for him college production was never the issue for him at arkansas he was awesome man 31.3 percent college target share which is 93rd percentile for all you analytical you know nut jobs kind of like myself Traylon Burks was just super productive in the SEC, man. Like, he had ridiculously good draft cap. 18th overall pick in 2022. That's earlier than JSN, QJ, Jordan Addison, Zay Flowers, the entire 2023 wide receiver class. Uh, Traylon Burks got better draft cap than, like, Justin Jefferson, T. Higgins, Brandon Ayuk, right? That just This is me painting an image, painting a picture, trying to show you guys how much the Tennessee Titans really liked this kid when they were evaluating him back in the draft, you know, several years ago. And and if you remember, I know it hasn't amounted to much because of the injuries and the disappointing sophomore campaign, but, but according to every report out of camp, Traylon Burks was playing at a different speed, right? Twitter yeah. clips are going, Twitter, Twitter clips are going crazy. I get it. That, that means zero it means nothing. They were cool to watch though. Right. <laughs> He's uh, all the reports were saying that he had that noticeably leaner build, the Titans did not add a wide receiver until round seven. You know, Bur- Burks just checks a lot of boxes, man. Like, he has talent. I would argue that there's a lack of target competition outside of D-Hop, right? And I'm assuming moving forward, he will hopefully have a more competent enough QB play with Levis. Uh, we hope. We yeah. saw some flashes in his first outing. And the Titans have a potential out of D-Hop's contract after this season. He'll be 32 next year. And I want to give a quick piece of advice for dynasty players. Please pay attention to players' contracts, right? They matter. Mm -hmm. They're telling. They're able to give us fantasy players a better idea of how a team views their assets. And also, another valuable asset for the Tennessee Titans, Derrick Henry, he's going to be 30 in January. And I think that the identity of this team is going to have to change inevitably. And the Titans and Derrick Henry, right? They signed a four-year, $50 million contract that included like $25.5 million guaranteed back in 2020. I just want to put it out there that Derrick Henry is a free agent after this season. They're going to have to rely on their pass game much more. It's impossible to replace Derrick Henry. I like Tajay Spears. Shout out Tajay Spears. He's probably yeah. not going to, you know, obviously amount to Derrick Henry. And he's a totally different style running back. They're not going to right. lean on him point i'm getting at is that they're going to have to transition to becoming a more pass heavy offense and then final thing i want to say about this nick Payne, westbrook chris moore they're not going to get glanced at when Traylon burks is running downfield with his hand in the air just running a, a go route catching a 60 yard no. bomb man i i said my piece about Traylon burks um if you want to go buy him it's cheaper than ever 
If you yes. don't want to buy him, I get it. I'm just saying, man, this is, you know, these are the type of dart throws that you want to take. These good prospects. I still think the landing spot is fine. Lack of competition. Go, go buy Jalen Burks, man. Do yeah. It. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because I, I, I usually skew a little cheaper in these conversations here, but, you know, he is getting cheaper by the day when with no production and people are, I'm sure, ready to bail. So it's probably a good call that that you could send some some cheaper stuff his way. And I, I'm I'm still in on Traylon Burks. We just really haven't seen him all that much. Like into his rookie season, we saw some some times where they, they kind of figured out how to use him a little bit and and do the things that work best for his skill set and and him be pretty productive with that um and then you know injuries have just kind of piled up for him and you know after he could come back in next year and unfortunately right before the season started we had that or or maybe that was i think he got injured right before the season and then just really hasn't been right throughout the season um but like you said we 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 were hearing really good things about him and we've seen how they've attacked with 32 year old deandre hopkins down the field at times with will levis and i think that's a very very uh, when you started this whole thing my point was exactly kind of what you were saying is that i think you know there's an identity change possibly coming could they bring in another hammer uh as a running back that 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 kind of stylistically more fits like derrick henry yes they could but you know you know it's probably more of hey these are the tools that we had so we this is what we built um, you know, I love Tajay. He's, he's certainly a stash, but I don't think anybody needs to hear that, um, at this point. Um, uh, but yeah, t- totally different player. Um, and I think, you know, totally different offense, uh, e- even really since, you know, uh, Will Levis has been in there. It's been a, a little bit different, uh, of, a of an offense. They need an offensive line is what they need. Um, so yeah, I think that's, I think that's an interesting, um, name to bring up here because i do think he's just nobody nobody wants anything to do with Traylon burks right now mm-hmm. you know? and that's when you buy man 23 right. years old 23 yeah grab so, him stash so him so or if you have him don't sell him for cheap for at least from my perspective I'm, I'm i'm hanging on so i'll throw a rookie out there who's who's super cheap obviously you know guys like spears you know hang on to spears you know a, a bunch of those rookie running backs who were second third fourth round picks H- hang on to those guys you know I'm going to go um, Trey Palmer here. Uh, Mm -hmm. Just again, we got an expiring contract with Evans. We don't know what's going to go on. We don't know what's going to take place. There's a lot of unknown seemingly in Tampa Bay. He's super cheap. He's on the bottom of a bunch of my rosters. He's he's free. You can get him in in trades for as a kicker for probably next to nothing. But Trey Palmer and you could throw in Rakeem Jarrett in there. I like to kind of pair up these these young, cheap players who I think you know, can be good and, and go after one or the other or, or both and put them on the bottom of a roster. Uh, like I said, Evans in a contract year. We don't know if he's going to get paid. We don't know how much he wants, what what's going to happen. Will he finish his career in Tampa? We don't know. He's been great. Um, so, you know, he should go fetch himself, you know, a nice little short contract from somebody who needs a, a dominant wide receiver. He doesn't seem like he's slowing down. He's doing what Mike Evans always does. Uh, ball. Um, it's perennially disrespected. Um so Trey Palmer, Rakeem Jarrett, kind of young guys to 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 go after and target, put in the bottom, and maybe coming into you know the season next year, maybe it's Godwin and and Trey Palmer. Look, Trey Palmer's looked pretty good out there um, in the role that he's played. He, he's been getting kind of the third wide receiver snaps and being worked in a little bit here. He looks fast. He looks uh, very capable. We know he can he he can be a field stretcher, but he looks like he's coming into his own as as being able to be more than than just that. So. Uh, Trey Palmer and and I could throw Rakeem Jarrett in there as uh, some some stashes for me going into 24. Did did you have a, a, any more on your list or was that it for you? No, sir. That's it, man. All right. Well, I'm going to rat off uh, one or two more here. Uh, Rico Dowdle um, coming in uh, this year. He's he's getting a little bit more playing time with the Cowboys, but he's going to be a free agent. I think he's a pretty good player. Uh, he's absolutely free. Nobody cares about him. And and you know, a lot of running backs are going to be switching jobs and there's a lot of running back free agents uh maybe he can grab a two spot somewhere and, and work his way in there um and then you know another rookie we mentioned with the, some of those other guys i think chase brown uh is an interesting one to, to go ahead and keep stashed and if anybody's interested in getting rid of him um grab him for cheap you know they have uh travion williams who's out after this year with his contract uh and chris evans I think they can save a reasonable amount of money. He he ends up being damn near a, a million plus 
kind of running back on their team, which, you know, isn't terrible money as, as far as it goes, but you can, you can go ahead and put, uh, I think Chase Brown in that role. And I think he's better at every facet, uh, besides not being on the field at this point than, than Chris Evans is. So if they're able to cut him, I couldn't quite get a read on the dead money. I'm not a capologist. It seemed like there was some chance that they could cut him for pretty cheap and save a decent amount of money. So he, he could kind of be the only running back on their roster besides, uh, Joe Mixon. And I think, I think Chase Brown's uh, a really solid player. I really liked him coming in. So I uh, just wanted to give you one more kind of cheap rookie to throw in there. Uh, I have a whole bunch of other guys on here, but we'll kind of save them. You got anything else before we uh, get out of here? No, man. I'm just ready to move to Florida. I'm ready for warmer weather because <laughs> it was uh, 20 degrees today. It was not nice in New Jersey. And I, uh, yeah, I dude, going to college in Florida just ruined me, man. I should have never came back. I, yeah, uh, no, I do. I took that weather for granted. That's for sure. I mean, we're in South Carolina and it was it's still pretty cold today, uh, but I think it got a little cold in Florida, too, but it's not quite as cold as it is here. But Florida's uh, not terrible. So, um, <laughs> yeah, not bad. Well, very much appreciate you. Where can everybody find you before we end this thing? Yeah, man, at Austin Abbott FF. I'm usually on Twitter like 24, 25 hours a day. So you can <laughs> probably hit me up and uh, just I'm happy to talk dynasty. I'm happy to talk fantasy. Any questions, man, just reach out. Just just enjoy talking football. So I yeah. appreciate y'all for having me, man. Let's get the FF out of here, fellas. Yeah, man. Uh, great stuff again. Uh, we'll, you'll be seeing more of Austin. Uh, obviously, we don't need to say guys like Keaton Mitchell and stuff like that are stashes, but you know, they're, they're, there's lower end guys, Gus and, and Dobbins contract years. So there's not a whole lot of Ravens running backs left. So. You know, Keaton Mitchell could be a nice stash. Maybe if you can't get a two or something for him, maybe don't sell him for a three and stash him. Um, other than that, we'll be back with more mustaches. We'll be back with a 24 rookie mock. We'll be back with more startup mocks. We'll be back with rankings, all that good stuff. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, all that jazz. $5 holler on the Patreons. Uh, until next time, uh, we'll see you. Peace. Peace.